This world's smallest rubber ducky was part of a PCB way contest. Like the developer, I've ordered a few units and I wanted to thank them for manufacturing and assembling the PCBs and for kindly covering the cost of the PCB I'm showing you in today's video. To give you a better idea of its size, here is a comparison with a 20 cent euro coin and one square on the grid is equal to one centimeter. And for those not familiar with these units, while I do not have a banana for scale, I do have a micro SD card. But you got the point, it's really, really tiny. Let's take a look at the GitHub project, the hidden H. IDV2. This is really a tiny version of a rubber ducky. As we have seen with the coin and the micro SD comparison earlier, here we could see the difference with a pen and when it's plugged into a USB socket. Looking at the PCB, we could distinguish four LIDs on side. These are infrared LIDs, meaning you could run the program from a distance. But this is, will be covered in another video. And before we come to the flashing section of this video, I want to remind you this video is only for learning and not intended for misappropriate use. Always use my tutorial in ethical ways, of course. And unlike all the projects, the PCB here does not have status LIDs or buttons to inform and select which mode you want to operate in. In order to flash, we will need to connect the boot and the 303 volt pins here. And when we are ready, we need to cut this section and connect ground and boot in order to run the applications. At the time of this proof of concept, I didn't have any coal wire thin enough to temporarily solder the ground and the boot zero pin. So I decided to use tin to solder a quick and dirty fix as you can see here and in order to protect from any short circuit I use electrical tape to cover everything so as you can see here is really not something discreet and you can show off yeah I have a weird USB dongle plugged so that's of course, only a proof of concept for my own use. Unlike the developer, I didn't want to use my own USB slot for my motherboard or laptop. I preferred using a USB cable extender. This way, if things went sideways, I could quickly unplug the cord. Plus, if the PCB got stuck, I wouldn't damage anything valuable. Last thing, but not the least, is the connection. I first plugged it in the wrong way. And this is prone to short circuits, so I was happy I used the USB extender to unplug it really quick. Then I switched sides and everything fit perfectly. No, I didn't put all the way in the back so I will be able to easily remove after I flash the board. Now it's time for the software part. I successfully flashed the device on a laptop and didn't mind sacrificing if things went wrong. That's why it had Windows installed. Now that we are set for the context, you could flash a board right away using the rubber ducky lword.hex file from the debug folder on github 
However, remember, don't trust always verify what's inside, so compile it. For flashing, you could use STM32Cube, but I avoided installing it since it might come with too much bloatware as one of my channel subscribers suggested. Instead, I use a DFU util package with its common and binary files. While Windows detected the STM32 bootloader, which was good, I couldn't flash it due to driver issues. So that was something I have thought, but I didn't know what to do. So I was googling around with um, some, let's say, similar topic. And I just found a thread on a forum that suggested to use Zadig. So what's Zadig? It's a um, small utilities that help you to force driver installation for whatever driver you need for, let's say, sound card, etc. So I just downloaded here on this website. And as you can see, the Windows is pretty simple. So you could select the hardware you want the driver to, to be reinstalled. And I had here the STM32 bootloader in that list. I just selected it and hit the replace driver. After a while, it was just installed and I could relaunch my flashing. So after that, the console showed the flash was successful. And here you could see the different line I had to type in order to run the flash. However, there were some differences between my understanding and what actually happened. Once the flash was completed, the device ran automatically in armored state. When I unplugged and plugged the device back into the PC, it typed hello. And this is surprising because I expected that it will require me to solder the 3.3 volt with boot zero first. Instead, once flashed, the board was no longer in bootloader mode and it remained armed even though boot zero was connected to ground. So this behavior needs to be clarified. So please let me know in the description if you know what happens. Now, I'm planning to make another video anyway with this board, especially focusing on the IR capabilities for remote script control. And after discussing with the same subscriber, I would like to explore an easier solution for flashing the board. And for those who watch the video until the end, I might set up a raffle like another video in order to give you a chance to win two fully assembled PCBs. So stay tuned.